racing is an exciting sport. Engineers and mechanics work hard to make sure that the engine produces as much energy as possible in order to push the car down the track. In this activity, you'll get the chance to build a propeller-driven race car. At this time, gather these materials. Torsion is a term used to describe what happens to material that is twisted. For example, when two ends of a rubber band are twisted in opposite directions, the force causing them to be twisted is called torsion. Now that you have the proper materials, we're ready to begin. Locate the competition rubber material and cut one 24-inch section for each racer kit. Two forces a race car must overcome are wind resistance and friction. Now it's time to build the winding station. There will be one winding station for every four kits. If the winding station has already been assembled, you can skip ahead to the next section on the video. To create the station, first pop out the laser cut parts from the basswood sheet. Lay part one flat on the work surface so the part number is facing up. Part one should be laying flat on your workstation. At this time, we're going to glue parts two into the holes on the sides of part one. When you add the glue, Make sure to place it on all the edges of the part two piece that will touch the slot in part one. The groove on top of the part two pieces should be facing away from the number end of part one. Once the pieces have been glued, you will need to let the winding station dry. We're ready to begin building your racer. In each kit of four, the racers have a slightly different design. Three of the four designs have five laser cut parts, and the fourth design has seven parts. There is an extra step for the fourth design, but all four racers work exactly the same. First, you need to carefully pop out the laser cut parts from the basswood sheet of the racer you are constructing. Be sure you don't lose or break any parts, or you might not be able to finish the car. At this point, you should have all the pieces popped out from the basswood sheet. Now locate one of the plastic bushings 
and in each part four, push the bushing into the hole. Again, be careful so you don't break the wood piece. Now that you have the bushings in place, it's time to glue two of the part four pieces onto part two. Make sure the flanges or the wide ends of the bushings face out from the middle of part two. Let the glue dry. We are back and ready to move on. At this point, you should glue the last two part four pieces onto part three. Again, make sure the flanged ends of the bushings are facing away from the middle of part three. Let the glue dry. Now that the part two and three pieces are dry, we're ready to attach them to part one. Glue the notched edges of part one and then insert parts two and three. Piece number three goes in the front and two is in the back. When you're finished, let the glue dry. We're moving forward with the project. The next step is to locate the tiny part five piece. We're going to glue this part into the notch on the top of the racer. When a rubber band is twisted or stretched, it is said to have potential energy. When the band is released, the potential energy is also released in the form of motion or kinetic energy. If you are building the racer with two extra parts, we'll show you how to add them now. If not, you can skip ahead to the next section of the video. Locate parts six and seven. We're going to glue them into the notches at the front and rear of the racer. The smaller piece, which is part six, is glued in the notch at the front of the racer. The larger part seven piece is glued to the rear notch. After you have finished both pieces, let your racer dry completely. Now it's time to attach the axles and wheels to the racer. Insert the axles through the bushings at each end of the racer. Firmly press one wheel on each end of the axles. Make sure the wheels spin easily. If they don't, push them farther apart on the axle. Now that your wheels are attached, we're ready to add the motor to your race car. In this situation, it's a propeller. Simply push the propeller onto the back of the racer. Locate the two screw eyes. If you hold the racer so the underside is facing you, you can see one small starter hole on each end. One is located on part two and the other is on part three. Carefully twist the eyes into these starter holes. 
make sure they are straight. You will need to twist them in far enough so that when the car is resting on its wheels, the eyes do not hit the ground. Make sure the eye holes face the ends of the racer so the monofilament line can run straight through the holes. We're ready to move on with the activity. Locate your section of competition rubber. Tie the two ends together in a tight knot. Hook the unknotted end on the small metal loop on the propeller. Hook the knotted end over part five. Marcel Layette, a Frenchman, invented the Helica, a propeller-driven car in 1913. Congratulations, your propeller car is finished. At this time, we'll show you how to set up the racetrack. If you've already completed this step, skip ahead to the next section in the video. To prepare the racetrack, you'll need to gather these materials. You'll need to find a space with a hard, even surface to use as the track. Hallways with tile floors or school gymnasiums are good locations. You'll need a space 30 to 60 feet long. At the start and finish ends of the space, fasten the line anchors to the floor with duct tape. Once the line anchors are in place, locate the monofilament line. Tie a loop in the end of the line. Use a knot such as the overhand or figure eight. Hook the loop over one of the anchor screws on the line anchor. Walk to the opposite end of the track, letting the line unwind as you go. Bring the line just past the anchor and cut it. Once you're at the other end of the track, tie a loop at this end of the line using the overhand or figure eight knot. Tie the loop so it's approximately 24 inches short of reaching the anchor screw. For example, if your track is the full 60 feet long, you would tie a loop in the line so that the length of the line plus the loop is 58 feet long. The line should be stretched tight. Now that you have one lane's line attached at both ends, cut off any excess line extending from the loop's knot. You will need to repeat these same steps to attach the line for the other racing lane. Fold the towel so it is several layers thick, but still wide enough to cover the width of the track. Place it in front of and parallel to the finish line anchor. The towel will lie on top of the line preventing racers from being damaged when they stop. Once your car is completed and the track is set up, you're ready to race. At this time, you'll need to gather the winding station, winder, and the two race cars. Use duct tape to tape down the winding station on a firm surface.
Now you're ready to prepare the cars for the race. Place one racer in the winding station. Put the clothespin on the back of the racer so it prevents the propeller from moving as you wind the car. Lift up the end of the competition rubber that is hooked over part five and attach it to the metal hook of the winder. Turning counterclockwise, wind the handle 40 to 60 times. Because the winder operates on a five to one ratio, this will equal 200 to 300 rotations. When you are finished, replace the competition rubber over part five. Once your racer has been wound, it's ready to fire. Without moving the clothespin, take the racer to the start line anchor. Remove the line from the anchor screw and run the line through the screw eyes under the racer. Be sure the front of the car is facing forward. Hook the line back over the anchor screw. Repeat this same process for the other racer. It's time to race the cars. With both racers backed up to the start line, remove the clothespins at the same time. Make sure there is someone at the finish line to determine the winner. This concludes the prop racer video. To see more hands-on kits from Pitsco, visit our website at www.pitsco.com.